Every single society that has ever been studied scientifically by anthropologists and scientists, you find evidence of same-sex sexuality. Every single animal species that has ever been studied finds, you know, evidence of same-sex sexuality. There's been a number of studies that have looked very rigorously and very scientifically at uh, reorientation therapies, reparative therapies, and they have found uh, a number of serious flaws. First of all, they, they tend to misrepresent themselves to clients. Uh, you know, the American Psychological Association has some pretty strict rules um, about ethics. And you cannot uh, sort of market a therapy to a client under false pretenses. You have to be, you know, in order to, to, to be a, a, you know, a member of, in good standing of the American Psychological Association, you have to be accurate and honest with your clients about what they can experience as a result of the therapy. And the APA has, you know, found that the majority of these therapies are being misrepresented. That therapists are saying, we can change your orientation when in fact all of the data, all of the data suggests that that's not the case. Uh, sometimes they're successful in helping people to change their behavior, um, just like any of us can, can you know, alter our behavior at will, but they say that the attraction, the same-sex attractions will disappear, they don't. So, it's, so that's problematic in that it's unethical that they're leading people to think that they may experience something that they will not experience and the methods that they use to achieve this you know, aim that they, they can't achieve tend to be very aversive. They use techniques sometimes involving the administration of, of uh, you know, drugs to induce nausea, um, aversion therapy. They tend to leave individuals feeling worse about themselves, uh, having the same feelings that they had before but having a whole bunch of extra bad feelings along with them. And so they really violate this notion of first do no harm. So these therapies are, uh, are marketed inaccurately. They don't actually have the effect that the therapists claim that they will have. And they do additional damage by using these sort of aversive techniques that leave people feeling greater shame, greater guilt, feeling worse about themselves as a result. So they do do harm. It may be nice to have this ideal where you know, scientists can just produce their work and not worry about how it's interpreted, but we have a society that actually puts a lot of store in scientific findings, and scientific findings are often cited as the basis for public policy. So I think that it's incumbent upon any of us who produce science that we know is being used to support political arguments to be as clear as we can about what would constitute an appropriate use of that research. Uh, I think I know that there are a lot of scientists who would say, you know what, I just produce the data and then how it's used is, is not my problem. But I think knowing that we have a culture that actually treats scientific findings um, very seriously in terms of, of support for public policy, that would be inappropriate. We have to be very vocal about uh, what constitutes an unscientific uh, use of the data and that's why I think it's important to speak out.